Okay, so now we come to what I've been doing lately. And what I've been doing is trying to figure out how many uh, ways there are to cut a hypercube in, in dimensions with a plane and have that plane intersect four vertices. So, in a cube of three dimensions, it's easy to see that each side fits the bill. There's four vertices that intersect the plane of each side. But also, if we go diagonally down the cube, right, we get another one. And that go diagonally up, diagonally across this way, across this way, and then also uh, across that way, and across that way. So there's 12 ways there. Uh, but how uh, can we come up with a formula to count these things? Well, let's look at how a cube is constructed. Take a square and push it in some direction. All right. And I'm just going to draw the complete graph on it too. Because these edges are going to be important. Now, to figure out how many um, planes there are, well, these two copies of the square are each going to contribute a plane. All right. Each edge is going to contribute a plane because each edge connects up with itself, making a plane. See, there's a, one of the diagonal planes. There's another one of the diagonal planes. All right, and a plane, four planes for each of the sides. All right. And then um, lines parallel to each other in the um, original also contribute to a plane. So, I claim that the number of squares, I call them squares, in a hypercube of dimension n can be got by taking twice the number of squares in the hypercube of dimension n minus 1, right? Each square, since the two uh, n minus 1 hypercubes uh, retain all their squares uh, when they're pushed, when one copy is pushed over in another direction from another, twice that number, plus each edge from the cube one dimension down will get pushed in one direction, taken to itself and make another square, plus all the parallel lines. Well, K here is going to be an element of this, what I call a directed edge set. All right, these elements of K are the numbers of uh, parallel lines in each direction. So for 2, so for D2 is going to be the set made up of 2, 2, 1, 1. We don't want to count a, an edge to itself because we've already got those squares. Um, but for two, par two different parallel edges, for instance, call this one and this two, one to two gives us a square. Also, two to one gives us a square. So twice the number of ways that there are to choose from those k parallel lines, two of them. All right, so that makes sense. But the problem now is how to construct this D, this directed edge set. So let me introduce the concept of a K direction. Right. A K direction is a set of two uh, lists of numbers 0, 1, negative 1, uh, so that the number of 1s and negative 1s count those and you get K. So for instance, a, a three direction in um, n equals four, say, would be the set of lists zero, one, negative one, negative one, and also going in the same direction when you think of that as a vector is zero, negative one, one, one. 
So that uh, is a K direction. And every K di direction has two representatives, uh, a vector and its negative. All right, so this is a three direction in four dimensions. Now, how many different K directions are there? Well, we, uh, let's see, how many K directions? Four in dimensions. Well, there are lists, and each list has K ones and negative ones. All right, and since they're the negatives of each other, um, let's consider the representative which has a positive one for its first non-zero coordinate. So we choose out of the in, in uh, coordinates k of them to be non-zero. And then after uh, the first one, which is a one in the representative we're working with, we can choose and get different k directions uh, whether the next non-zero coordinates are one or negative one. So we have two to the k minus one. So that's how many k directions there are. Now, how many edges uh, go in each k direction? All right. Consider uh, a single k direction, say oh, 0, 1, negative 1, negative 1, our three direction for 4. An edge lying in this k direction means that the coordinates of the two vertices that make up that edge have a difference equal to this. So, the different ways there are to choose um, vertices that, lie, uh, that uh, give this edge direction. Well, the positive one, the, the one we're doing first, has to have a 1 wherever there's a 1. So, uh, all right. And has to have a zero wherever there's a negative one. The uh, one that's being subtracted from this has to have a zero where there's a one and a one wherever there's a negative one. But there's two ways we can do this first coordinate. We can choose a zero or we could choose a one and a one. Notice, if you subtract this from that, you get this. If you subtract this from that, you get this. So, these non-zero elements of the k-direction set the coordinates of our, of our um, vertices that subtract to get the k-direction. The zeros give us options. In fact, two options for every zero. So, there are two raised to the n minus k edges in each k direction. Now, that means that the directed edge set for any dimension n is equal to, uh, I'm going to use this uh, sum with the circle uh, to represent uh, addition into a set, uh, like appending a number to a set. And the number we are going to append to the set is to the n minus k. Right. And we're going to do this as k goes from 1 to n. And we know that there are n 
choose k, 2 to the k minus 1, k directions for each k, and 2 to the n minus k edges for each k direction. So this is how I get the directed edge set. All right. So let's use that. Let's get a few of these directed edge sets first. Um, so for n equals o3, dn d3 is some k goes from 1 to 3, some 3 choose k, 2 to the k minus 1, and add 2 to the 3 minus k. Alright. When k is equal to 1, we've got k minus 1 is 0, so 2 to the 0 is 1. 3 choose 1 is 3. We've got 3 copies of 2 squared. 4, 4, 4. Is that right? 1 minus 1. Mm -hmm. Good. Alright, when k is equal to 2, we have 3 choose 2 is 3. 2 raised to the 2 minus 1 is 1, 2. 3 times 2 is 6 copies of 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then uh, when k is equal to 3, 3 choose 3 is 1. 3 minus 1, 2, 2 squared is 4. 4 copies of 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's exactly what you see. If we go to the three-dimensional cube, we have one, two, three, four edges. Right? One, two, three, four edges. Right? One, two, three, four edges. Four, 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 all parallel. And then here and here, that's a two. Here and here, that's a two, a two, a two, and so on. And then the ones that go the one, two, three, four that go all the way across the cube lie in their own direction. There we go. Works out. And now uh, let's get this 12 squares from our formula. Sn is 2, Sn minus 1 plus the number of edges in n minus 1. That's in the complete graph. Okay, so element d n minus 1. Two, K okay, choose two. Okay, so the number of squares in a three-dimensional cube is twice the number of squares in a two-dimensional cube. The number of squares in a two-dimensional cube is one. The number of edges in the two-dimensional cube is one, two, three, four, five, six. Plus, all right, K is running through all of these. So K is four. 4 choose 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, twice 6 is 12. Alright. Hmm, something's very wrong here. Directed, I just said, oh, this is 2. Alright, so D2 is 2, 2, one, one, there we go. We need k to be in d2. Two choose two is one, times two is two. Uh, plus, again, sum. Uh, two choose two is one, times two is two. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There we go. All right, now let's move up to S4, hypercube. Let's see if we can figure out how many squares are in a hypercube. Well, there's twice the number of squares in a three-dimensional cube plus the number of edges in a three-dimensional cube which is oh gosh oh yes it's the number of vertices choose two so eight vertices choose two what is eight choose two eight choose two is eight 
factorial over 6 factorial, 2 factorial, 8 times 7 over 2 is uh, 4 times 7, which is 28. 28 plus, now we'll run through these. K is 4, 4 choose 2 is 6, that's 12. 12, 12. And a 2, 2 choose 2 is 1 times 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 times 2. Well, this is 24 plus 28 plus uh, 36 plus 12 equals 36 plus 36, 72 plus 28 exactly 100 like I said in the last video and you can iterate this process and there is a closed form solution for this you don't have to have a recursive formula um, it involves the sterling numbers of the second type uh, there's also a nice little generating function that I don't have right now alright you have a good afternoon thank you